Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Horton, and this is The Wise Woman. I hope this isn't too much for the camera. This is uh, my flashy little Christmas shirt, because today I want to talk to you about the upcoming holidays. That's why I'm wearing this shirt. Now, I wanted to get this out really ahead of the holidays, because the holidays are one of the most stressful times for women. Men, they could really care less. Give them some food, they don't care. Some football, they don't care. But women, we get all just wrought up with holiday planning and where we're supposed to be and what the kids are doing. And I want to give you a little wise advice before the holidays. Now, Ecclesiastes 1, and this is verse 10, I'm going to paraphrase, says there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. Every year, Tons of women get exasperated around the holidays. It's been happening for years. Now, even when I was young, and I'm, I, you know, I can't teach you guys anything that I haven't already experienced. I've, I've experienced it as a child. I've experienced it as a daughter-in-law. I've experienced it as a mother-in-law, as a mother, as a friend. So let me just let me just give you a scenario. When we were little, we had a Christmas play at our church every year on Christmas Eve clockwork every year my mother's mother had Christmas every year on Christmas Eve so there was always a big hullabaloo in our household are we going to go to church are we going to go to grandma's are we going to go to church or are we going to have Christmas with the family and it was a tug of war and us kids were always in the middle because we wanted to go to church we wanted to be in the play we wanted to get the candy afterwards it was fun my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side, of course, church. So there was always a fight. And it was sad because it happened every year. And then come Christmas Day, so here's how we did it. Let me let me back up. So here's how we did it. So a lot of times we would do the Christmas play and leave right after and go to my grandma Vodder's and have Christmas Eve, spend the night at my grandma Rini's and um, grandma Lorene's and have um, wake up the next day for Christmas Day there. And in between, I forgot, in between, so in between my grandma Vodder's and going to bed at my grandma Lorene's, we went to our house where Santa had magically come and we opened our presents there. So Christmas Eve, we had the church Christmas play, my grandma's house, our house, and then we stayed all night at my grandma's house. And then the next morning we had Christmas there. And then... Thanksgiving was was a lot of the same actually Thanksgiving was my grandma on my mom's side wanted to have Thanksgiving but um, the whole family on my dad's side had Thanksgiving and so we usually picked my mom's side because that's the way that went and so every year though it was a fight every year I kid you not every year it was a fight and I'm thinking even as a child it's like didn't we just do this last year who has any wisdom around here? Fast forward, I get married. And my mom says, okay, if you're, because I, I was the only one married, if your mother-in-law wants to have Christmas, Christmas Eve, which she did, then we'll have it Christmas Day. There's no problem. Okay. And so then Christmas Day, we would be opening our presents and we would get a call from my mother-in-law inevitably and say, are you guys coming for Christmas dinner? Well, we were just there for Christmas Eve. But I want to see you at Christmas Day. We had the same problem in on Thanksgiving. My mother would say, okay, if she wants to do dinner, I will do it at noon. Or, you know, we'll work it around. And my mother-in-law would always say, okay, I want to do it at 6 o'clock in the evening. This, every year this happened. And so my mom would say, okay, we'll have it exactly at noon. And that way you'll have time to recover before you go to another Thanksgiving. We would be sitting down to eat. 12.15, my mother-in-law would call my husband. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner is ready. And we would all do the, whoa, 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 no, no, no. You said you were doing it in the evening. It got done early. And so what would ensue is this big hullabaloo. It was horrible. And I was taken back to when I was little and thinking, oh my gosh, I should be smarter than this. And so what we had to do was, um, and I mentioned before about my mother-in-law, which was a challenge, 
um, we had to make very specific boundaries for my mother-in-law. And that was, we will be there at, and we gave her a time. And that's how we're going to do it. Please feel free to start. Please feel free to do whatever you need to do. But we will not be there until this time. And so my husband and I had to set boundaries around our holidays. There were years that every other year we would go to my family's in Indiana for Christmas. We'd load up all the kids. We'd go and spend Christmas there. It was not an, it wasn't discussed. That was my husband and I's decision and we did thusly. So I'm saying that and saying I totally understand. I totally understand. Sometimes I get to spend Christmas with my kids that are far away. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have to pick a time when um, their other, my, my daughter-in-law's family's not coming so there's not too much for my daughter-in-law. And a lot of times that means we don't get Christmas Day. And I have to say, okay, it's all right because the love is there, I'm good. And, and what happens is if you don't have the right intentions, you can build up resentment and bitterness. Well, to get to spend any time with my kids that are away is such a blessing. There, if, if her mother wants Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Christmas Eve, go for it. I'll take what I can get and I'll be blessed. And by the same token, you know, if my kids that are here go elsewhere for Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving for, or for Christmas, it's not for me to tell them what they can and can't do. As a mother-in-law, I have definite boundaries. So I have to be blessed no matter what. So what do you do? If you're the daughter-in-law, if you're the daughter, if you're still the daughter of this crazy mother at 80 that says you have to be here, what do you do? Holidays are about love. They're about fun. But your family comes first. And when I say your family, I mean mother, father, children. So if you're a wife, your husband and your children, that's your family. What's good for you all? And you cannot be in three places at once. And do not separate your family to make people happy. Yes, I said it. And yes, I mean it. This is a time of love for a family. Your family is your husband, your wife, the one you promise to love, cherish, honor, obey, till death do you apart. Cleaving only unto them. Number one, children. They're in your little circle. You take care of them. So what do you do? Now, you can do what um, we did. You can say, okay, you'll get Christmas this year and you'll get Christmas next year. If you guys can't get along, that's how it's going to be. Or you can really just change all up and say, we are doing Christmas here at our house. You are welcome to come, any and all. But that's how we're doing it. And that's perfectly fine. And the problem is that we as a family start these traditions. And they're so good. I love traditions. We have so many that I started with my children and now my grandchildren. And they are cherished and honored traditions. And they're not wrong but sometimes they don't get to be priority. And I have to smile and go, okay. I often think about the parents that are alone on Christmas because all the children's families are doing different things and how sad it is. So we wanna prefer, we wanna think about that. You know, if you have a, um, a mother-in-law that is a widow, absolutely include her. That's right to do. We should take care of the widows and the orphans. If she's insufferable, invite her for a little bit and offer to have your husband take her home. But this, this should not be a time of stress. This should be a time of joy. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your um, big calendar, your three-month calendar, or get your little book, whatever you do, put it on your computer, however you do it. And I want you to map out how you, your family wants Christmas to go. Map it out, okay? And then, let's say somebody comes and says, oh, we want to do, say, oh, I'm so sorry, we've already made plans. Now, you can invite anybody over to your family if you want, or you don't have to. If you want to make it a cozy little family affair, you can. 
the point is don't get too stressed over it and and have your plans oh i'm sorry we're, we're going to my parents and a lot of times what will happen is parents are really savvy to this 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 uh, and they'll ask way back in september now now we want you early so you have to be prepared and say to your you need to have a little communication with your husband and say okay where do we want to what do we want to do how do we want to do it um sometimes as kind as you want to be, you should always be courteous, you should always be kind, but you can't spend a lot of time in some people's homes because their um, their values are not your values and they do things that perhaps you don't want your children involved in. And you have to be very in front and say, oh, we would love to stop by, but we have other plans. There's always a way to say it with love and with kindness, but you need to say it. And wives, do not make your husbands make that call. Do not make them call their mothers. You be very straightforward. Now, should they call their mothers? Absolutely. But if you're the one pushing, do it together. Oh, you know, we love you, but. Always, always be thoughtful of that next older generation because you're gonna be there. And the way you treat your mother-in-law is the way you're gonna be treated. The way you treat your mother is the way you're gonna be treated. It's called sowing and reaping. Be very careful, but on the flip side, you cannot be all things to all people. That's Jesus's part. Jesus is all things to all people, you're not. So, what does your family enjoy doing? Do they enjoy going to Uncle Jack's? Then by all means, go to Uncle Jack's. Psst, who cares? What does your family wanna do? Do they wanna go on a big Disney vacation? Go on a big Disney vacation. Get back and say, you know what? We're going on a big Disney vacation. When we get back, we're gonna have a great time with you all, but this is what we wanna do. Do it. It's okay. You have my permission, but you don't need it. What a family nucleus decides to do is what is right. But don't be ugly, don't be mean, don't be stressed. Do everything in love, consider everyone, and, and don't exclude anyone, but you don't have to do everything that comes up. Just because your office has, has a party doesn't mean you have to go. Just because your neighbor's having a party doesn't mean you have to go. And if they have a problem with it, it's their problem, not yours. This is probably gonna be a long video, I'm telling you. There is so much to be said. If I'm invited to my neighbors and I can't go, I'm very direct and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I can't go. Now, if it's because I don't want to go, I do not give an excuse. I do not say another word except, sorry, I, I, I'm not gonna be able to make it. I never say, listen, I am not coming over there, you all are wild. I don't say that. Sorry, I can't make it. Usually my husband's office party falls on our anniversary and my husband we were it's, it's all it's, in the past it's been a uh, I need to go okay and so I just left it to the Lord and said Lord now you know and for the last two years my husband has said no 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 we can't go we're celebrating our anniversary because he knows his office parties are a little much for me they um wow I, I don't even want to go they are, they're, they're much, too much for me. And so he knows it and he loves me and I didn't push him. He made the decision on, on his own. And I so much appreciate that. And that's what it's, that's what the, the holidays are about. We're having fun. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus. We're celebrating family. We're celebrating um, the winter. We're celebrating so many things. So why let stress come in there? Don't get too hungry. Not during the holidays. Don't get too tired, don't spread yourself too thin, and don't ever get too stressed. There will always be another thing to do. You could even take the night off, I don't care who's having a party, and get in your pajamas and just sit and watch TV. It's allowed. Don't stress yourself out over this, ladies and gentlemen. You should enjoy the holidays, whatever that means to you.
Leave those lines of communication open with the in-laws and the family. That's important. And don't be ugly just to be ugly. That's important. But be open to other possibilities. Be open to other days to celebrate, not just Christmas Day, not just Thanksgiving. Be open. My, my dad's family that used to have their thing on Thanksgiving now have it the Sunday before so that as the families were growing, they needed to have Thanksgiving. So the older people, the elderly ones, are the ones that moved it because they were wise. They knew they would have everybody come on that Sunday. But if they still kept it on Thanksgiving, it would separate the families and they wouldn't see as many of the people. That's wisdom. That's what I'm talking about. What's wise? What's wise in this situation? The holidays are gonna be here before you can open your eyes. I don't want you guys to be upset. I don't want you to be stressed. I don't want you to cry. And if you have any questions, you know there's an email there. I would love to answer any and all questions you have. Take a breath, have some communication, and walk in love as always. Let's pray. Father, Lord God, I thank you that we have this time on earth to celebrate. I thank you that we have family to celebrate with. I thank you, Father God, that we are so loved by our family that everybody wants a piece of us. But Lord, we want to do things decently and in order, and we want to do things for the glory of, of your name. Lord, help us to walk in love, help us to walk in wisdom, and help us, Lord God, not to be stressed, but be calm. We know this is nothing new. Generations have dealt with us, and we know we can through you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Bye.